The burning question has been asked over and over and over again, and I want to answer it with the utmost certainty. Will DACs sound the same if they use the same chip? Let's find out. Whenever I hear the predictable, they all sound the same to me. I always laugh and think to myself, how could they? I see this discussion in the comments and in forums quite often, so I felt it was worth taking a little time to chime in with my own two cents. So to answer your question quickly and easily, do DACs using the same chip in a similar price setup sound the same? No. They don't. If that's all you wanted to know, slap that like button and click off. For my friends who want to find out why, I'm going to explain it to you all right now. It's important to recognize the importance that power supplies play in the performance of digital analog converters. Many people may take a power supply for granted, adopting an if it works, it works mentality. However, this perspective may overlook some critical considerations. Power supplies can be a source of noise and distortion within an audio system. If you opt for a lower quality cost saving option, it could have an adverse impact on the sound quality of your device. This is why two DACs using the same chip might present drastically different sound profiles. Investing in a well-designed power supply can be a game changer for DACs, even with identical DAC chips. The integration of a substandard power supply can result in a significantly inferior audio experience. It's essential to consider this aspect when evaluating or designing a sound system as it can truly make or break the overall performance. The journey of an audio signal doesn't end after its conversion from digital to analog. It continues through various stages of amplification and filtering, culminating in the final output. It's within these critical stages that the true artistry of engineering comes into play, and where I believe the most significant differences in sound can emerge among DACs. Each engineer brings a unique approach to the design of these stages, similar to an artist painting a portrait. The components, quality, and even personal listening style of the engineer can all contribute to the final sonic character. No two engineers are the same, and thus the output stages they craft will bear their distinct imprint. Designing these custom PCBs to create a pleasing oral experience is more than mere science. It's an artistic endeavor. This intricate process shapes the sound in a way that's unique to the creator's vision. The art form of transforming electrical signals into captivating auditory experiences is, in my view, one of the most sophisticated and compelling art forms of this industry. In a digital audio system, the clock is like the conductor of an orchestra, ensuring that each part plays in precise synchronization. The clock generates a series of electrical pulses at a specific frequency to synchronize the timing of various elements, such as the sampling of the digital signal and the conversion process in the DAC. The accuracy of the clock is vital in minimizing errors during the digital to analog conversion process. Any deviation from the intended timing can lead to anomalies in the sound. Now, jitter refers to the small random variations in the timing of the clock's pulses. In an ideal system, the clock pulses would be perfectly regular, like the ticking of a flawlessly engineered watch. However, in real world systems, there are always some inconsistencies. First, let's examine the underlying factors that may contribute to jitter in a digital audio system. Electrical noise, such as interference from nearby components or power supplies, can disrupt timing accuracy and thus introduce jitter. Temperature fluctuations are another consideration. Extreme variations can negatively influence the timing components leading to inconsistencies. Mechanical vibrations should also not be overlooked as they can also have an impact on precise timing mechanisms. When jitter happens, several things could materialize. We could observe a particular distortion that obscures fine audio details, deteriorating the crisp clarity that characterizes high quality sound. Jitter can interfere with stereo imaging, causing the spatial presentation to become unfocused. In more severe instances, it may even lead to changes in the audio system's frequency response. The challenges posed by jitter, however, are not undefeatable. Engineers employ various sophisticated techniques to mitigate its effects. Buffering, for example, can be used to temporarily store data, enhancing the precision of timing during the reading and writing processes. Some systems utilize a method known as reclocking, where a secondary clock is used to reclock the signal, effectively neutralizing jitter. 
Moreover, the application of higher quality components such as premium oscillators can minimize jitter from the outset. Understanding the intricacies of jitter and the methods employed to manage it offers valuable insights into complexities of digital audio engineering. It underscores the importance of precision and quality in the pursuit of exceptional auditory experiences. Subjective perception and expectations play a fascinating and often complex role in how we evaluate and experience audio. This aspect involves both psychological and sensory factors that can shape our assessment of sound quality. Let's explore this concept in a little more detail. Subjective perception in audio is a multifaceted concept influenced by individual preferences, psychoacoustics, and the placebo effect. People's unique preferences for sound can vary widely, influenced by personal experiences and cultural backgrounds. Psychoacoustics, the study of how humans perceive sound, explains why identical sounds might be heard differently by different people. Perceptions can be influenced by knowing the quality or price of the equipment, a phenomenon also known as the placebo effect. Expectations formed by factors such as brand bias, visual influence, and the influence of reviews can significantly shape a listener's experience. Positive experiences with a brand or persuasive marketing can create expectations of high quality, while the appearance of equipment can further enhance these expectations. Reviews and recommendations, along with the context and environment of the listening experience, can also influence what a listener anticipates and perceives. So to sum it all up, subjective perception and expectations are complex and deeply personal aspects of the audio experience. They encompass more than just the physics and engineering of sound, incorporating psychological and sensory factors that vary widely among individuals. Recognizing these factors is essential in the world of high fidelity audio, allowing for a richer understanding and appreciation of the nuances in sound and reinforcing the importance of personal listening and evaluation. An individual's subjective experience with a DAC can be enough to determine whether they perceive one as sounding different from the other and whether they judge one to be superior or inferior. Now, there's probably a multitude of more reasons they all sound different. However, these specific topics were the ones I found the most interesting to discuss. At the end of the day, you know what I always say. Enjoy your music using whatever you feel sounds good to you. If you found this video to be educational and awesome, then present the like button with a choice. You are one crew, or you are the enemy of one crew. Choose. Subscribe to the channel to help me grow and ring the bell to get notified every time a new video is born. With all that said and done, friends, I will see you on the next one. Take care. The winner of the iFi Go link is at Philip Morris 9847 I will comment on your comment, letting you know you won. Best bet is to send me an email with your shipping info, and iFi will ship you one directly. Thanks for playing.